hello everyone uh, welcome back to my tutorials today I'm looking at uh, some solutions of running my Calabash tests on cloud services like test monk or Xamarin test cloud the first option I want to explore is test monk I'll, I'll also be uh, trying to explore solution using a Xamarin test cloud which I'm installing currently at the moment so test monk doesn't need any installation so let me go ahead and uh, try and do that in the, in the first so the first thing uh, we should be doing is uh, in register to test monk create an account and then you'll need to you'll need to have some basic stuff done in order to get the te get your test running so you need to have a feature file which can be created quickly using a calabash uh, android command and secondly you should have a you should have the git github project which is the link provided here this is a github project for the android test application provided by testmonk itself so copy this link so clone it onto your desktop and then open it using your eclipse let me do that as well so open it using your eclipse and then compile the application when uh, well importing your project import your import the project the project which is cloned from github as using the import let me show you that file import existing android code into workspace so if you do that then you'll get a folder like this which you can right click and then run as android application so before you do this have you make sure your device is connected and that device is visible using your adb devices command so then uh, your application will be compiled and it will be executed on your device that that uh, gives you like 100 percent assurance that the code which you have cloned is all intact and it can be run and the application is testable okay so it will also generate the apk file which will be required in future for running the tests and the second thing you should be doing is download the calabash framework so i've created a directory i will generate the calabash framework just to show you how it how easy it's to it is to do that So a template framework will be generated when you hit the calabash hyphen android gen command. So before you uh, start this uh, tutorial uh, or session, you you should have also the pre-installs uh, for calabash uh, installations for calabash completed. You can take a look at what are the installations required here. So this. Uh, this guide is very useful in order to do all the setup that is required okay once that is complete so you'll have a features directory with some feature file created uh, which is an example feature file let's open that okay so that feature file will contain some default text which I have removed and uh, added some uh, and added a scenario of my my own self and then it has a steps definitions directory and a support folder which we don't need to change okay i have a i have added two tests which we are going to test using the test monk uh, remote services so the let me show you a view of uh, how the app test monk application itself looks and then you'll be able to understand why i've written these two tests Okay, this is uh, how the sample uh, test monk application looks on an Android phone. So you will see this as the first screen. You'll see this will be a test app text, and then you'll see click me. So if you when you do a click on click me, then you'll see a next screen where the below uh, above text will change to hello world. Okay, this is the first step which I told you. You'll see a particular text. And when you do an action, click me, and then you see 
next test okay i've written another test which is basically for checking uh, this is a positive scenario and this is a negative scenario here the expected text is changed to no world instead of hello world so this test should pass and this test should fail only then we can say okay uh, the test should what whatever we have written uh, works well okay now let's go back to the portal itself so on the test monk or you need to have your apk file which needs to be put into new test which needs to be put in here and then you should have the test cases i mean this whole feature file features folder which should be zipped and uploaded in test cases when you have these two you can come back to dashboard and start executing your test so let's do that now so we'll go to new test run folder and then we'll open the eclipse where we have the apk file which we have created let's drag and drop it so that was nice and easy now let's also upload the feature files Sorry, I've just uploaded my um, APK file. Now I need to update my test cases, which I'll come here and then do, uh, upload them onto this window, uh, into this uh, view. Okay, my test cases have been uploaded and they're passed. You can see my te second test, which, uh, which said, uh, and I wait to see no world is present here. Okay, I have my I have a set of test cases uploaded. I mean the feature file scenarios, and I have uh, the APK file uploaded. And then if I come back to dashboard, I'll have an option to start my test run because this option comes back comes when you upload a new test run. So that means um, when each time you upload a new APK, you will see that option. So now let's start the test. This test uh, ideally, if I run it on my local machine, I think it should take like. Uh, maximum one to two minutes I think I should I would expect the same amount of time to be taken by the remote server as well because uh, we have already uploaded the APK which is which is already there and then the test cases are also being uploaded onto the server so you see a nice little spinner which is running to say indicate that our tests are in progress so I'm not sure about how to select uh, what devices this test should be run and what's the kind of operating system we are targeting to run and also how long each test will take to run okay now you can s I can see an option to view the results but my tests are still running that means this is a partial result and out of the two tests one has passed I think it will auto refresh by itself so I'll just wait for like 30 seconds more to see if the results are updated by themselves so another good feature of test monkey is that once the tests are completed remotely I will get an email saying my test results are ready to view so that I don't need to sit and wait for like tests to be completed instead I could kick off my test and then take a look at my test results whenever I get an email Okay, it's taking a while uh, to run my second test. Uh, it's it could be due to the wait uh, for waiting for a text uh, failure. Okay, my first test was passed and second test has failed. So this was the expected results. So let's look at both the logs how both the tests look okay nice so I can see my 
uh, step which is which in my scenario and I can see a screenshot below it this uh, this is a very good feature now let's look at my second test so because I'll be pretty much very much interested in my second test which and I want to know because what was the reason for its failures so my fir first step of that second scenario is okay the second step of my second scenario the third step has gone wrong so time dot waiting for elements so this yeah you can't see no old present anywhere right so this was a nice quick session about test monk where i did show you how to put uh, how to upload the apk and also how upload your test search and also check your test results so this looks uh, pretty promising but uh, we thought uh, testing different c cases like uh, using a cross-platform architecture uh, testing uh, to uh, cross-platform test to run on uh, remote servers and also how to use the mm, how to use how to select the devices for each test runs and how to sch schedule the tests every day and these are the kind of things I would be pretty keen on looking at okay and uh, in my next uh, video I'll be trying to explore uh, Xamarin test cloud so once I'm done with both I will make a little comparison of uh, how test monk scores against uh, Xamarin test cloud so keep it keep watching my videos have a great day and have a great day ahead thank you